So now that we've seen how logarithms work, let's take care of some of those expressions. Let's work through some examples and see if we can understand what's going on. So if I say log base 7 of 49, read it correctly. Don't say log 7. It's log base 7. So when you hear base, think about that being the base and the exponential. So my base is 7, 49. So remember, the answer to the log is the power. So what we're supposed to be thinking about is this. 7 raised to some number is supposed to equal 49. The answer to the log is the power. So here, what power of 7 gives you 49? 2. And that's it. That's all there is to it. If I ask you, what is log base 5 of the fraction 1 over 125? Now this may seem kind of difficult or impossible, but it's, it's not. Remember how we said in the last video that we can rewrite these guys as exponential equations, and that might help us. So let's do that. If we think about this, we're trying to answer the question that 5 raised to a power, let's call that x, is equal to 1 over 125. Now in a previous video, we talked about how we can rewrite this. 125 would be 5 to the third, right? But since that 125 was in the denominator, that means it's going to be negative 3. So 5 to the third is 125. 5 to the negative third is 1 over 125. And in that case, we've got the answer. We know that x is equal to negative 3 because since these guys have the same base, that means their powers must be the same. So when we evaluate this logarithm, the answer is just negative 3. Just like that. So here's another way of working this. And I want to try to get you guys to think about these guys in a way so it makes evaluating logarithms really, really easy. If I just do this, and I say, what's the power of 5 that gives you 125? You should, in time and with practice, say 3. Since it's in the denominator, you now go, oh, that's going to be negative 3. And that's it. So as a follow-up to this one, if I say, what is log base 7 of 1 over 49? Okay. So let's think about the trick that we just talked about. If I didn't have the 1 there, and I just said log base 7 of 49, you would say 7 to the second power gives me 49. But then that's going to be negative because it's in the denominator. See? Really not that bad. All right. If I do log base 3 of the sixth root of 3. Oh my. Well, we can think about this again as something that's exponential, right? So I've got to think about this. 3 to some power, let's call that x, is equal to the sixth root of 3. Well, in a previous video, we talked about how we can rewrite the radical. We said how we can rewrite this to be 3, because that's my base. This is understood to be to the first power, so that's my numerator. Your index is the denominator of your power. So the index of your radical becomes the denominator of your power. And well, there you go. Since these bases are now the same, they're both 3, then we can say that x is equal to 1 over 6. And that's what this logarithm is equal to, 1 over 6. Not too bad, right? Now, let me do an additional one. Still based off of this same kind of concept here, if I do log base 3 of the 7th root of 9, let's see what happens here. See if we can find like a shortcut way of doing this, right? So if I don't have the 7, if I don't have the root there, what's the power of 3 that gives you 9? Because remember, the answer to the log is the power. 
So what power of 3 gives you 9? You know the answer is 2. Well, what about the root? What about the index of 7? That would become the denominator of your power, just like we saw over here. This root became the denominator for the answer, which again is connected to the power. And that's it. Right? You just have to know your powers and uh, you're going to be okay. All right, let's see. Let's do this. Log base 8 of 32. So in this problem, we're trying to figure out the answer to the log, which is the power. The power of what? It's the power of 8 that's going to give me 32. Now, some students that are not paying attention are going to say, oh, the answer is 4. I'm not asking what would you multiply 8 times to get 32. I'm asking what power of 8 gives me 32. Well, that's the problem, right? Because 8 to the first is 8. 8 squared is 64. Well, it's got to be somewhere in between those guys, right? But again, we want to rewrite this as something that's exponential. And it might make it a little bit easier for us. So my base is 8. I'm trying to find the power of 8 that is equal to 32. Now, if you kind of block out everything else, and you pretend that none of this stuff has ever happened, I now have an exponential equation. And my goal here is to rewrite each side so that they have the exact same base. Well, with practice, you guys will recognize that 8 and 32 have a common base of 2. So I can rewrite 8 to be 2 to the third, and I can rewrite 32 to be 2 to the fifth power. Practice with these guys, that way when you see the numbers, you know what they're based off of. 32 is 2 to the fifth, okay? Now, you have power to power, so we multiply just like we did before. So 2 to the 3x is equal to 2 to the fifth power. And since these guys now have the same base, I can set their powers equal to each other. So we have 3x is equal to 5. Finish getting x by itself. x is equal, x is equal to 5 divided by 3. Now I know I solved this like an equation, but you need to make sure that you remember to come back up here and answer the question. So the logarithm, log base 8 of 32 is 5 thirds. Now in a few videos, I'm going to show you a kind of a shorthand way of doing this. There's this fantastic thing called the change of base theorem. But we'll get to that. All right, let's do one last example here. So log base 1 sixth of 36. Yeah, this looks kind of gross. But again, if I go back and I work this guy like an exponential equation, it may not be so bad. My base is 1 over 6. And I'm trying to find the power of this that's going to equal the expression inside the logarithm, which is 36. Okay, let's see. I've got an exponential equation. And I see that there is a common base. So between this number and this one, there's a common base of 6. I just have to rewrite each side so I can clearly see that common base. So here's the tough thing that a lot of students forget about. 1 over 6 can be written as 6 to a power. Now, of course, that's just 6 to the first, but since it's in the denominator, that's 6 to the negative first. And 36 here on the right side is going to be 6 squared, like that. And now we just fall back into our old habits powers to powers, we're going to multiply these. So that 6 to the negative x is equal to 6 squared. Since we have the same base on both sides of the equation, we can now equate those powers. So negative x is equal to 2. Finish getting x by itself and x equals negative 2. So that is the answer to the logarithm. And if you think about it, it makes sense. If I raise 1 sixth to the negative second power, I get 36 because, do it piece by piece, 1 sixth to a negative power. Well, a negative power turns you upside down, so it's going to turn the 1 over 6 into positive 6. 
and then the square, when you square the 6, you get 36. So everything checks out. Now, in the next video, we're going to see some very basic logarithmic equations. So, see you then.